Hi guys, I am so sorry. I am I've lately had a an internet glitch here and I couldn't get online. <laughs> Never mind. I'm here. So Okay. Well, hopefully this is going to work. I am not very familiar with this, so I hope it's all gone live and I hope it's fine. I'm presuming that it is. I have messages on here, which... The sign says, we're telling you all followers you've started a live video hold on it says we're telling more followers to join <laughs> okay ah oh, anyway my issues today have been long and many i've had just had an internet glitch so i was late starting and also i've been um guess what i have been blackmailed by a review scammer who has been asking me for money hello hi so yeah so that person was asking me for money online and um, trying to make me buy fake reviews of him and then when i wouldn't buy fake reviews of him he um he added loads of fake reviews onto my thing so that wasn't fun hi good to see you okay yes so i'm sorry i'm late so it's been a bit of a stressful day today never mind we're here now so shall we make a start so we're going to start with a good old-fashioned reality check that's where we are the truth does not change according to our ability to stomach it flannery o'connell good old flannery <laughs> it's a great name isn't it okay the reason things haven't worked out so far is not a reflection of you as a person more of a reflection of what you've learnt and believed to be true about yourself, your current reality and how life works. Now the first step in the process is to step back and get clear about the current divide between your existing reality and what you actually want. The truth behind what's happening today, now. Now sometimes just that insight alone makes a huge difference to how you understand and approach relationships moving forward. Now, of course, the problem here is you might be so deep in the movie, your story, that you've created around your current experience that you can't see out. It might be useful at this point to get some outside eyes on the situation. What do your friends think about the situation? What are they saying? Now, I'm a big believer in the statement, we always know the truth when we hear it. But how do we know if they're right or if they have a personal view based on bias or prejudice? How do we know if we should follow their advice? So there are two ways of working out whether advice is worth listening to one does it sound right even if you don't like it and you find yourself saying yes but answers to justify your position you find yourself telling people they don't understand in your heart of hearts you probably know the truth because it's right if you were your best friend in the whole world, what would your advice to yourself be? Two, the other angle is to feel whether or not the advice feels affirming or undermining. Affirming statements are designed to empower 
strengthen, boost and generally raise up. Undermining statements are reductionist, are fear-based and are in the guise of being sensible but are not supportive of your highest good or your long-term happiness. Having an instinct about the truth of your situation is a start and that insight is important because it puts us on the right step on the road to solving the problem. Now we often don't want to acknowledge the truth because again we're caught up in the story and we don't want to let go of it. These stories are really powerful and they sit at the root of a lot of relationship issues and keep people stuck in loops, which are very compelling, almost hypnotic, in fact. Now, I'm going to go through some of the most common relationship story myths that I see coming and causing havoc in their wake. Now, these myths are romantic ideals or archetypes which are often in reality smoke screens to relationship experiences that range from frustrating to downright toxic. Now perhaps you've experienced one or more of these. What's interesting is what drives each of these archetype relationship stories. Now let's have a look and see if one or more of these sounds familiar? If the answer is yes, it's probably time for a rethink. So let's have a little dive into chapter two and with the first of the relationship myths. And the first myth is the soulmate myth. Oh, also called the one. Who is my soulmate? It's a call that resonates with so many of us. It's a romantic ideal that's built on the idea that there is one unique person with whom we are destined to be with. Can you tell me when I'll find my soulmate? Is a question that I've encountered hundreds of times in my readings for people over the years. What we really mean, of course, is someone with whom I can be myself. Someone who understands me, will love me unconditionally and who will not hurt me by leaving me. All completely understandable. But let's just unpack this a little bit. Now the problem starts with the romantic definition of the term soulmate. What, in, what the term actually refers to is a connection between two people that extends beyond this physical life into the spiritual realm. A soulmate in spiritual terms often refers to someone from your soul group who's here in physical life at the same time and has agreed to play a role in your life to enable a specific thing to happen or so that a specific thing can be experienced. There may well be a strong feeling of connection with this person they may not be and that connection may or may not be romantic but it doesn't mean that you're destined to stay with this person now we may encounter more than one soulmate in our lifetime and we may indeed play that role in someone else's life there is very definitely not one destiny soulmate most soulmates agreements are also not based on romantic ideals. Now look, this does not in any way devalue the question being asked though, because what we're referring to as a soulmate is shorthand for the mate for life that we feel in alignment with, that we compare with. So that's fine. But let's not confuse that with the idea of destiny. And again, it's definitely not tied to one person. Once again, our call for love and connection beyond the mundane, rather disappointing real life version that often presents itself 
is valid and it should be taken absolutely seriously. The trouble is, if we decide there's only one perfect candidate who we believe can deliver that ideal, we are seriously in the way of the process. Now the story also means that we are rendered powerless in that process, like the classic princess waiting for the prince. We must make, wait to find out our destiny and we have no control over our fate. So in a way, we can relax, eh? But the reality is there is not just one, but thousands of potential candidates with whom you could happily share a life. It may be that on your life path, there are certain relationships that are locked in as main events. Now, again, these may not be lifelong and there is definitely not just one person who can make you happy. Now, if we decide that that is the case, we might decide it was the last relationship or person who was the focus of our attention. And then you start looking for proof that that person was the one. And then you start thinking that you'll never find another. This directive from your mind transfers into an energetic signal which turns into a truth for you, which is sad because it's not a truth at all. Now, this is why we have to be really careful when we start focusing on the idea of a soulmate. We need to be clear about what we're asking for. Now, of course, not that there is just one perfect person who can deliver it, but what we actually want. Now, one perfect person is the stuff of movies, not real life. But this is good news because it means that once you see the truth of it, it makes your pool of candidates ultimately much bigger and your chances of success actually a lot more likely. Now, tomorrow we're going to be looking at um, relationship myth number two which will not tomorrow next week uh, we're going to be looking at the twin flame trap twin flames now that is a hot topic so join me next tuesday at seven o'clock and we will look at the twin flame trap now in um a couple of minutes let's have a look we're going to take some cards so if anyone has a question, you are welcome to ask and I will be very happy to answer your question. Okay. Hello, Kamal. Lovely to see you. Now you've missed the book reading, sadly, but we're going to do some tarot. So if you have a question to ask, do jump in and ask it. We're talking, we've been talking about um, the soulmate myth. Thank you. That's lovely. So you've read the book. That's fantastic. Very good. I'm very well. Thank you, Kamal. Okay. So I have taken some cards. Um, the first one I've drawn is... Um, the Hierophant. Now what I've done is I've asked for a card. I'm going to take cards which are, are relevant to what we've first been just been reading about. And this is the Hierophant. Here we go. Now the Hierophant in tarot can be a tricky card to read. If you're learning tarot or if you're interested in tarot, it's one of the, it's one of the awkward ones. But what it actually is referring to here is what we religiously think what thoughts are the highest up in the hierarchy of our thoughts now we can see here that we have what looks like a church like a temple and we have a, a monk or religious figure and we have a rule book okay and he says this these are the rules this is what's true he tells us what to believe so what you believe 
religiously about relationships is going to make a huge difference to the results that you get okay now often also as we've been talking about soulmates we're talking about a an earth to spirit connection which is obviously what's going on here in this in this church with this monk it's like we're praying aren't we we're going oh please please help me and that's fine but you know our our earth to spirit connection is not is not fixed we what we are asking for is going to be guided by what we believe is possible what we believe is true because we can't attract anything else on some level our ex our external reality is going to reflect what's inside us and what we religiously think what do i mean when i say religiously think i mean that we think all the time that we believe is an absolute truth that you believe is an absolute truth will show up for you okay so we've got to be really careful with that so the next card i've taken is the page of pentacles pages are students in tarot so it's asking you when it comes to relationships to kind of go back to being a student what are you becoming a student of you're becoming a student of the the rich life experience that you want so what kind of relationship would give you that rich life experience that you really really want and it's asking you to become a student of that experience to learn about it to learn about relationships and learn how to make it a reality he's curious look he's reading books he's studying that's what we're doing now we're learning about how to create the ex life experience of the relationship experience that you really really want so it's asking you to go back and study to become curious about what's possible and to not feel that you have all the answers already but to be open like you were when you were young when you're when you're trying to figure out what's out there and how it works and what's going on it's asking you to do the same thing and the third card that we have is this card oh this is the one of the scariest cards in tarot it's the nine of swords and the nine of swords is the nightmare card this is the card that tells us that what we're thinking is is that it's a nightmare it's it's like we've got to look at if we're thinking this if we're scared if we think it's going to be a nightmare in some way that's going to be affecting what it is that we're going to be attracting to us okay the nine of swords talks about um worst case scenario thinking so it might be that it's, oh my nightmare is that i end up alone my nightmare is that i'll get cheated on my nightmare is whatever your nightmare is yeah you've got to sort out the fear of it because what we religiously think about tends to show up for us in some way have you noticed that it's true what you religiously think about tends to show up amazing how that happens it's almost like it's energetic so here we go we've got to be really careful about our, our worst case scenario thinking we should not put our attention on our worst case scenario thinking and the last one I've asked what we should put our attention on is the page of cups now pages as we said before are students and the page of cups is a student of happiness and it's asking you to go back to the drawing board and think about what actually makes you happy what actually is is at the root of inside you it's a very simple card and it also is 
to become a spiritual student as well so to become a, a a student of your intuition become a student of your connection to spirit of your to your connection to the energetic world to start learning about that connection and learning about what makes you happy what 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 makes you simply happy like childlike happy with none of the sort of the grown up messiness the 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 limited thinking the the um you know the sort of pessimism that we often bring to the relationship scenario this is an innocent card now it it doesn't want you to become um guileless but what it's talking about is understanding what makes you actually happy properly happy and if a relationship is not making you happy then it's not the right relationship so there we go look i really hope that's been interesting guys thank you for joining me um if you missed much of the reading i'm gonna put it on youtube so it'll always go up on youtube um the week after i'll will will i'll get my my lovely assistant <laughs> to um to save it and to to do all of that i'm glad i'm glad it was interesting thank you and um are you going to meet me next week because next week we're going to be looking at the twin flame trap that's always cool do we have do we have um uh experience of twin flames in the house anyone had a twin flame or thought they've got a twin flame anyone well if you haven't thank goodness because it's not fun <laughs> good stuff all right i'm gonna see you have a lovely evening and i shall see oh good i'm glad you never did fantastic keep it that way trust me all right sweeties well i'll see you next week uh see you at seven and uh we'll do the next bit of the book okay bye bye for now bye bye